Hi, I'm Bob with LPS Computer. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the carriage belt on a DesignJet 500 series plotter. The procedure is exactly the same for the 24 inch and the 42 inch. Um, it's also exactly the same for the DesignJet 800 series. I'll be using the instructions that come in a kit provided by LPS. These are written instructions um, that are taken from the, uh, the service manual, which is uh, also included in its entirety on a CD that also comes in the kit. Um, service manual's got troubleshooting tips, theory of operation, error codes, um, assembly, disassembly instructions. It's got um, all of the parts and, and, and breakdown drawings and that sort of thing. Uh, in the kit, we also include a 39-piece tool kit that's got all the tools that you will need uh, to complete this job. In fact, anything else you ever want to do with this printer, with the exception of two specialty extended uh, torques that you're going to need to get this thing apart and back together correctly. The uh, kit also includes... Uh, Non-evaporating oil, it's kind of important because you want to keep the friction as low as possible on the, the rails that the carriage ride on. When the machine is first calibrated, the machine measures the friction left and right and creates a voltage offset to compensate for differences in, in, uh, in the friction left and right. And then it never looks at it again. So if that friction changes, it's going to affect your print quality. So the best thing to do is keep the friction uh, within the proper range and you would do that with the oil. Something that you spray on is going to get sticky over time and evaporates and it will actually increase the friction and uh, you'll, you'll definitely see it in the quality of your output. The kit also includes a belt that comes packaged like this. The belt itself is made out of poly, high density polyurethane and Kevlar from DuPont. Uh, half of the belt has got teeth all the way, well, teeth on one side and, and ribs on the other side. The teeth go toward the motor pulley because there's teeth on that pulley that drives the carriage back and forth, and the ribs ride in the uh, idler pulley that keeps the belt centered. Now, there's belts coming out of Asia and other places that are have teeth all the way around it, and so you can't use the OEM pulley, and you lose that centering feature to some degree. Uh, these belts are made in the United States. These are the only design jet belts made in the United States. They're made on a mold o owned by LPS Computer. We had it made for us. And um, the company that, that makes these is a very reputable, big company that uh, does a fine job for us. Their quality control is really good. We hold the uh, length variance on this down to 40 thousandths of an inch. That's about half the width of one of these teeth and that's plenty tight. We found out after we got all this together that uh, HP's tolerance is much wider than that so we over-engineered it just a little bit. They're extremely strong. Uh, if you're going to go to the trouble of putting in this belt I highly recommend you get you know this belt or get an HP belt. Uh, the, the, we, we've heard lots of horror stories from them the uh, other belts that come out of Asia. They're all neoprene and, and uh, fiberglass. They're, they're yesterday's technology. Their quality control isn't very good, and that's being generous. The kit also includes uh, calibration media. This is a type of plastic film. We like to use plastic because um, originally that's what HP used to give for this calibration. Plastic's not going to expand or contract with temperature. It also won't expand or contract with changes in humidity. So you will get the most stable calibration with this media than you, a more stable calibration with this media than you would with paper. Um, you will get the calibration as accurate as you can possibly get, as, as close as the machine can get it. This a piece for this one is 36 inches wide and it's five or six feet long. The instructions say to load a roll of uh, photogloss media. And so this is loaded as a roll. The reason it's so long is to make sure the machine thinks it's a roll. You're going to have some left over. 
Well, let's take this thing apart and I'll show you how to change the belt. The end covers need to come off first. There are five screws in each end cover, but they're not in the same place left and right. The first screw we're going to look at is the one on the inside cover here. There's one down here that's kind of out of sight. We've already taken it out. And the rest are on the back side. I'll just swing this around and show you. Okay, the next one is right here on top. This is on the right side cover only. There's one right here. And you have to have this lid open to get to it right there. And the last one is down here in this corner. And this one's ready to come off. I've already removed all those screws except the top one, so this should just slide right off. Okay, the left end cover has three screws, the same two are in the front, the same location as the right side. But here we've got one here, here, and here. I've already taken those out, so I'm going to go ahead and slide this off. The top center cover needs to come off. That's got three screws total. One, two, three. We'll take those out. Now you open the front cover, which is part of this, and then there's a, oh, a, a finger that sticks out here on each side, and this clips down over it. So I'm just going to nudge this up and pop it off on each side. And the covers are off. Okay, we start the disassembly of the, um, we start the procedure to get the carriage out from the right side. Now the carriage is right here and it's locked into position over the service station. So the first thing we need to do is unlock that and get it out into its mid-range. The easiest way to do that is to rotate these white gears down here. Just like that. Just push them until they stop, and that will have unlocked the carriage. Now it'll just slide out. Okay, we need to disassemble just about everything that's on this side of the machine. So we start out by unplugging the all of the connectors on the interconnect board here. And move them out of the way. This board can stay on this assembly, but the display itself has to come off. Now this needs to get out of the way. There's a, a locating pin down inside here. If you pull that out, this will lift out. Now this just pops off like that. We can set these aside. Okay, we need to get the encoder strip loose. The encoder strip is this strip right here. It goes the full length of the machine. And um, it's a little bit tricky to get it back on this side if you haven't done it before. So what I'm recommending that you do is take a variation from the instructions and release it from the other end. There's one screw on that end we'll take loose. this screw right here and loosen that and sometimes it pops loose like that sometimes it doesn't you may have to pull it off now there's several screws holding this assembly on 
Um, well, we'll get to that in a minute. First, we're going to take the service station out. The service station is this black assembly that uh, generally sits underneath the carriage. It's held in, uh, in place by two screws. There's one here and one here. We'll take those out. Now so keep these screws separate. They're shorter than the other screws. And if you put a longer screw in here, it's going to generate an error for a 2110 error when you put the screws back in because if a longer screw goes in this hole, it's going to interfere with the motion of the service station. Now once they're out, you can grasp this by the bottom and slide it right out of the machine. Okay, now we can remove the belt from the other end, and um, now what we're going to do first, this is kind of a, an important detail. This is the tensioner assembly for the belt right here, and there's a, a strong spring right here. This is the, the end of the belt, or part of the belt, and the pulley it rides on is right here, and that's spring-loaded toward the end here by this piece. Now this piece will latch the spring down like that, so now this is loose. It's going to make it much easier for us to put the belt back on. Uh, that's the good news. The bad news is sometimes people forget to unlatch this and the belt tension's wrong and they get uh, check paper path errors. Uh, I'm sorry, check printhead path errors because the belt's not tight. So when we're all done, the, one of the last things we're going to do is unclip this to tighten the belt. Now to take that pulley out and loosen the belt, we're going to take the belt off of the motor pulley on this end. You can see it's nice and loose. It's easy to do. Now if we push the belt out, that pulley will come out of the machine and now the belt's loose on both ends. It's a good idea not to lose the pulley. You may want to use it again later. Okay, now this whole end needs to come off. And that's just a bunch of screws. We've got four or five screws in here, and they'll be pretty obvious. You've got one here, 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 here. Actually, there's four. And then there's two underneath that are not so easy to find. One of them is this one, and the other one is this one. So they'll both have to come off. And in addition to that, there's one more in the front, and that is right here. And that's on a little arm that sticks out of the uh, end assembly. I'm going to leave the encoder strip attached to this and uh, just because it makes it much easier for the installation to go back go back together. We'll take a little break here. I'm going to get all these screws out and then I'm going to pull this off for you. Okay, I've removed the screws from this and I'm just going to lift this off the machine. And you can see the encoder strips following along here. I've still got a trapped wire. Now the encoder strip is uh, it's fairly tough, but you don't want to bend it or crimp it or anything like that. Uh, good, good idea to clean the encoder strip with some with soft cloth and warm water while you've got it out. And uh, put it back in. Don't use detergent or Windex on this. There's real fine lines printed on here, and the de detergent, especially Windex, will take the uh, the lines off, in which case you get to replace the uh, encoder strip because it won't be any good after that. Okay, now we have to take the uh, get the carriage ready to come out of the machine. A couple of things we need to do there. First, we're going to take the print heads out. Next, we've got to take this screw out. Now, this is one of those extended, small Torx bits that come one of the special ones. You've got to use it for this. The book says this is a T9. It isn't. It's a T8. It's a captive screw, so it'll only come out so far, and then it's free. So we'll just stop right there. 
I'm going to bring it down here to in this area. And there's a little latch right here. I need to pull that forward and this will lift out. And we can let that hang out the back. That's going to be fine just where it is. The next thing we need to do is take off the trailing cable. Trailing cable is this piece right here. And there's a latch underneath or on the side here. And if you just push this in, this will pop up and come off just like that. Now we can easily undo these. A little plastic piece here. Half the time it breaks when you try to take it out. That one didn't break, it just went into orbit. And there's a finger underneath here. We can pull this loose and get that out of the way. Now I generally run this out the end of the machine just so we don't damage it in any way. And it stays flat and out of the way that way. Okay, and this carriage is ready to come out of the machine. So I can just pull this on through. And you'll notice there's two bushings on the back, this flat one. If this gets this clips in, if that gets broken, your carriage height is off or it gets knocked out and it's not put back, you get terrible print quality. The thing that loads this thing this way is the spring-loaded finger, which can also be easily dislocated. So be cautious with both of those. They both have to do with carriage height. Okay. If we look at how the belt is actually attached to the carriage here, there's the teeth go uh, or match up to some teeth here. I usually like to try to feed this thing up through if I can and pull it out this way so that I'm not fighting the uh, that little channel that's on the inside. flat blade screwdriver then and pop this up or your handy dandy boy scout knife or if you want a boy scout your girl scout knife whatever works and that's how it comes out now it's going to go back in the same way with some of the teeth this way so it ties in with this and can't slip and of course the ribs are going to have to go uh, on the opposite side. You put it together in the, in, at the transition point between the ribs and the teeth. You don't stick it in just anywhere on the teeth. That's not going to work. So it's got to be at the transition point. So we'll put the new belt on. If I could find it. Where'd I put it? Okay, here's the new belt. And I'm going to feed some of it through here like this just so we can get it roughly in the position and then I'll put it in the channel okay there's what we want in the channel Just like that. Okay, let me put this back in the machine now. Okay, I'm going to start off by getting this bushing on this, and then we're going to be very careful about the back bushing. Number one, not to knock this thing loose. Number two, to 
can press that or push this finger up so it slides into the channel easily. And then lastly, the, the third uh, bushing on the front here. Actually, I should have given myself some belt here to get through first. And we'll pull it into the machine. Okay, then reassemble is the exact opposite of taking it apart. Don't actually have to put the uh, trailing cable on just yet. We'll put this end on first. Okay, the key on this, there's a, a hole here in the plastic where the uh, end of the carriage rail goes. If you, if you line up on that, it's pretty hard to get this thing in wrong. In fact, I don't think you can. So once that's in, you go ahead and replace all of the, what did I say, there were seven screws. And, uh, well, I'm going to do that, then we'll be right back. Okay, the screws are back in this, and it's uh, it's nice and solid. I'm going to put the encoder strip back on, mainly just so I don't step on it by accident or damage it in some way. It's the most fragile thing we're dealing with at the moment. The encoder strip is going to go through a slot that's straight up from the the uh, the rail, and it's it's a vertical slot. And there's a sensor right inside there that that watches this thing go by counts the, uh, the lines and so on. So I'm just going to feed that through. Get the trailing cable out of the way first. And it's just going to pop right through there for me, aren't you? Yeah, how about that? Okay, and that goes right on here. Now the piece on the other end, the mounting piece, is a piece of spring steel that's going to keep this tight. So we need to bend that. You bend that by pulling on this pretty hard. And there should be a little nub right here. This one's worn off. But you can pull it up usually over that nub and it'll stay put. That's not going to happen with this one. So I'm going to have to pull it up snugly and put a screw in it. Oops. Don't want to over tighten it. You are turning it into plastic and you can't strip it, so don't do that. Okay, we can put the trailing cable back on at this point. Okay, start out by putting it over this little finger first. That locates everything for us right at the bend. And then uh, put it in the channel here. Shouldn't just fit in there kind of like that. These are somewhat fragile, so you don't want to be rough with them in any way, but make sure they're lined up very well and go straight down with them. And uh, actually pretty easy to put them in. Just don't get them in sideways. Okay. And uh, you put that X on, except I don't know where it went. Yeah, it's on the floor here. It's, it's not going to go anywhere. If uh, I'll, I'll put it on when I do find it. Okay, let's put the carriage top back on. There's a tab right here. 
that fits through a slot, tab A and slot B, as it were, just like that, and it clicks in. Now I can put the uh, tube system back on, and that just fits into place. What you want to do is get this slot right here over this edge, this slot, this edge. And when you push down, this thing's going to click into place. Now all we have to do is tighten the screw that we took loose a little earlier. And that was the T8. Okay, straighten this out a bit. Okay, ready to put the belt over the belt tensioner. You remember we compressed that to make it easy to get it back on. So we'll feed the belt through the top, the hole for the, the belt tensioner. Okay, we're gonna put the belt pulley uh, in that loop there and just pull it in. We're not gonna decompress that spring yet because we have to put it over the motor pulley. So if we go to the other end, we'll just slip it over the motor pulley. And check, make sure we're not twisted anywhere. And apparently we're twisted somewhere. Here we are. Slip it over the motor pulley. Now we un Release the clip that's holding the the uh, spring compressed on this. Let's the right here. I'm gonna try to get it loose with this. Sometimes these break off when you do that. It really doesn't hurt the performance. It's gonna make it harder to change the belt next time you change the belt, which with these belts may very well be never. Belt is in and tensioned. Okay, we can go ahead and put these print heads back in. Just have that out of the way. Okay, carriage is all back together. Okay, the next thing we have to do is put in the service station. The service station um, goes in with the gears facing toward the end. These guides here have to go into these guides up here. So, actually you push it in a ways and then you lift up. And it should go all the way back against the frame. Just like this. Now I would emphasize again that you use the short screws that came out of here. Otherwise you're going to have a problem. You'll have to take it apart and put the right screws in. That's not a T15, is it? Okay, now we've got to get all the wires reconnected. Uh, don't pinch this cable here. This has been a problem area where these, th this has been pinched or roughed up in some way. 
that, um, that damages it, and then you get errors from the uh, ink supply station or from the service station. This carries all of the signals from this board back, and it carries the signals to the display. So you want to be careful not to damage this cable. All of these are keyed. You can't get them in wrong unless you really put some effort into it. I don't know anybody that would do that. Except for this one guy that used to work for us. He had a problem. Okay, we'll put the display back on. This is the finger that actuates the um, uh, cover interlock switch. So this could fall off on you if it does. It's no big deal to put it back on. Just put it on like that. There's going to be a couple of extra empty actually just one extra um, pin uh, connector that's not used. They used to put fans on the uh, service stations, but they don't, they don't do that anymore. But the connector is still there. So when you wind up with an extra blank connector, that's normal. Don't worry about it. Okay. This one's got a fan. Okay, we're ready to put the covers back on. I'm going to wash my hands first so we don't make a mess of the covers. And I'll be right back. Okay, we start out by putting the top cover on. Here's the fingers I mentioned earlier that the uh, top cover is going to clip onto. These are the clips right here. So I'm just going to line that up and snap it on. And then there's the three screws that go into the back and that covers on. The display side, the right side cover. I'm going to open up the lid so it'll slide by the ink cartridges. and uh, get it into position. Once this top screw is in position, you know you got the covers on right. And there are five screws that I mentioned earlier to put that back on. One on the front, one on the inside, the top, and the two in the back. The left side, this is the easiest of all. Put it on, you've got the one on the inside, one in the front, and three across the back. And that's it, it's back together. Uh, once again, I'm going to take a break, put some screws in the covers to hold it together, and then I'll be back and we will do a print head, uh, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll do a paper advanced calibration. Okay, I've got the printer back together, covers on, I powered it up and let it come to a ready state. I loaded the calibration media from the back and I told the machine that it was a roll, not a sheet, even though it is a very long sheet. And I told it that it was high gloss media. So what I'm going to do now is show you the right buttons to push and everything to do the uh, paper advanced calibration. We're going to go to the paper menu, that's the top icon here, and we'll hit enter. And then this advanced calibration is already highlighted. It's a fourth item down. So we'll hit enter on that, and we're going to create the pattern. So push the button, and what's going to happen is that it will print the pattern and uh, cut it into a, at the right length of a, of a sheet. So while the printer's doing that, uh, we're going to take another break, and uh, once it's done, I'll show you what to do with the sheet once it's printed.
Okay, the, the printer printed the, the pattern and it cut it off. I unloaded uh, what was left of the, the, uh, the rest of the sheet. What we need to do now is to go back into the paper menu and uh, advance calibration. And what we want to actually, what we want to do is load sheet. And we'll hit enter. And it doesn't really matter what we're, what kind of paper here is because we're going to be reading this anyway. So hit uh, enter. And now we have to go ahead and put it in. This goes, one of these edges has dots on it. And it's the dots that go in first. We're going to load it that way. That's what the machine is expecting. So dots edge in first, we're going to hit the blue lines here and with a little luck we'll get it straight enough the machine will like it. Okay, we have to wait until this thing checks the paper. Okay, paper's loaded. Now we're going to go to the paper menu again. The advanced calibration. And this time we're going to measure the pa <coughs> measure the pattern. Now the machine does the rest from here. It looks at the uh, various things on the pattern and it makes uh, its own adjustments from here. It's totally hands off from, from here on. The reason this adjustment is important is because it makes one inch of paper motion exactly equal to one inch of carrier motion, carriage motion. And the importance of that is that it, it uh, prevents banding so that the width of each printed scan is exactly butted up against the next one so you don't get gaps and you don't get overlapping. So if you are seeing banding in your printout, this is the calibration that will get rid of it. Now hang on to this sheet because a year from now if you want to check the calibration you don't have to write it again, you just put it in and read it again the same way. Calibration's finished and so is this job. So, good luck with your, with your project, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.